Good morning and welcome to Bridgewater United Methodist Church. As we gather here on this Sunday morning for worship, I hope that you've had a wonderful week at your house and I know that I have at mine and we are gathered here today to worship God and that is a joyful time, amen? Well, today I just have a one or two announcements and I think I'm gonna have uh, you come on up, Karen, and she has something she wants to share with you. So, Karen? I have a couple of things. The first is that the mission team wants to thank the church for the support of their Chile uh, fundraiser. Last Saturday, we raised over $1,700 and had a great time, and we hope to be doing it again sometime soon. So thank you for your support. I also wanted to just take a minute to kind of explain and make sure we're all straight on how the prayer ministry in our church works. Um, if you have a prayer need in your life or in the life of your family or, you know, your neighbors or friends or extended family, um, you can call me or send me an email or, you know, whatever, however you want to let or call the office and let Paul know what that need is. Um, and then kind of two things happen. The first is there's a part of it, the prayer chain, where I will send out your prayer request with as much detail as you want um, to the people on our prayer chain. And that's a pretty long list. Um, it's basically most of the, the members of the church are on that prayer chain list. And they will lift you and your family and your need up in prayer. Um, and it also goes on a prayer list that we have, which is where the slides that you see each Sunday come from. And then there's also a smaller prayer group. There's about 10 of us that meet weekly um, and go through that list. And every, every Tuesday, we go through the list and lift up every name on that list for prayer. And... Um, and hold that list in prayer also throughout the week. Now, a couple things. One, we also have a confidential list that obviously doesn't go out to the prayer chain um, because it's confidential, but that we also lift up. So if there's something that you want people to be praying for you that you don't want to be known widely, you just let me know that you want it to go on the confidential list, and we will, of course, honor that request. Um, so that's kind of how it works. Another thing that we're going to be doing is we used to have a time when we shared joys and concerns during each service. Um, and this can be either, you know, big prayer concerns that you would send me or, you know, did your granddaughter, you know, make Dean's List or win in a softball tournament? Those can be shared too. Um, so I'd like to ask you to share those things with me also and we will have a a time at the beginning of our prayer time where we share those with the congregation too so we can all keep in touch with what's going on in each other's lives. If you have any questions or if you're not on the prayer chain and you'd like to be or if you'd like to um, join in the prayer group, please let me know. Karen Shambly and my information is in the directory or you can get it from the church office. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, let us be preparing ourselves for worship as we move from our announcements into the ringing of the bell. children. Morning. 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 How are you all this lovely day? Great. Peachy keen. So I have a question for you all today, and that is, how do you remember things? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I forget. Not well. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, sometimes you forget. You know, one thing that you may have seen that reminds people that you have something to do is 
when you have a string wrapped around your little finger. Can you imagine that? Uh, I've not used that a whole lot myself. I think I'd look down and just say, oh, I've got a string around my finger. Um, but that does help people remember. I know my mother wanted me to use a tabletop um, calendar. And this calendar would be something I put on my desk. I was going to bring you a, a show you what it looked like, but I forgot it upstairs. That shows you how often I use it. Um, but there are other ways that we remember, too. You might use something like this, a phone. A phone has a calendar in it. Computers do. And you can look up the information you put it in, and that will tell you when the next event is that you need to go to. What you might find is, uh, I'm sure that many of you have activities to go to, whether it's school, going to clubs, doing sports events, and having family time. You have all these things that are pulling you in all kinds of different directions. Well, we're not alone. Jesus also was pulled in many directions in his ministry. He was going around helping heal the sick, helping those who were around him and, and sharing the word and uh, helping others learn to live a better life and providing all these wonderful teachings and spending time with his disciples. And yet, you know, in the midst of all of this, what Jesus did, he took time away. He went out the way into the wilderness and prayed. He would go into this uh, there to take time to spend with his heavenly father so that he could be prepared for whatever came next. His example, I believe, is a reminder for each of us of the importance of taking time to pray. To pray before we eat, to pray before as we wake up in the morning, to pray when we go to bed. Having this moment to pray with our families and to pray to the Lord ourselves I believe is really important to us. It helps us to grow as Christians. And so I want to share these words with you about from Luke chapter 6, verse 12, that on one of those days, Jesus went on the mountainside to pray and to spend the time with praying to God. We're invited to, to take time to pray to the Lord. Thank you all. And may we take a moment and pray. Gracious God, thank you for your example, for sending us Jesus to help us to pray and honor you, Lord, and grow as your followers. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is When Jesus the Healer Walked Through Galilee.
Our reading today is from the book of the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as one of the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one each other, uh, asking one another, what is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread through the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to be God. God. Thanks be God. A couple of years ago, there was a pretty bad disaster out at sea. It seems that there was a boat that had cars and partiers on board, and in the course of setting to sea, they failed to shut the doors properly. And while they were, the storm that began to raise up, the water began to pour into the boat, and it started to sink, and, and panic set in. Now, people were screaming as the happy and relaxed atmosphere of the ship turned all of a sudden in from minutes to something that was very, almost akin to a horror movie. But all at once, one man, who was not a member of the crew, took charge. And in a clear voice, he gave orders telling people what to do. Relief started to mix with the panic. And in, the people began to realize at least there was someone who was in charge. The people began to get into the lifeboats that they would have otherwise missed if the man had not taken charge. But the man didn't stop there. He went down into the hold of the ship where many people were trapped. And there he formed a human bridge holding on with one hand to a ladder and with the other to a part of the ship that was nearly submerged. He was able to make sure people were able to cross to, the, to safety. And when this nightmare was over, the man himself had actually drowned. He had given his life using the authority that he had assumed, the authority by which he, that many, were saved. Now, take that picture of a man reaching out his hand to save others to a different seacoast. In the little town of Capernaum, there was a synagogue. And here comes a man, not one of the usual teachers, who starts on his own authority to tell people what God's will is and how the kingdom of God was coming. Unlike the temple in Jerusalem where people worshipped and made sacrifices, the synagogue was a place mainly for teaching. It was a place for prayer and instruction. And Jesus was teach, teaching was electric and new. The usual teachers, you know, the priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, they didn't teach like Jesus. They always said things like, well, as Moses said, or as Rabbi so-and-so said. 
On the other hand, Jesus spoke with persuasive authority, which was all his own. And then Jesus moves from authoritative teaching to authoritative action. As Jesus was teaching, the people stood amazed. We're told in verse 23 and 24 that suddenly there was in the synagogue a person with an evil spirit. What have you to do with us? This man cried out. Have you come to destroy us? For I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. This poor man had somehow been invaded by a force from outside himself over which he had no control. How many of us can relate to, to that sort of feeling? When our life seems to be going along just fine and then out of nowhere, out of no control of our own, we find ourselves in the midst of terrible time. You see, none of us have any guarantee. Any of us could be assaulted by a myriad of life exter external dangers, whether it be a car accident or an illness such as a, a COVID diagnosis. Or how about the death of a loved one, the loss of a job? How frightening life must be to be a person who is dealing with such things and they may have concluded that he or she must try and navigate through their life's perils without any resources, without any guidance, without any love or help from God. How easy and natural it must be to lose hope. In 2010, there was a report in the newspaper about a little boy in Chicago who had been shot and permanently disabled by a drive-by shooter. Now, this fact alone was awful enough, but the reporter went on to say in the article that everyone in the neighborhood knew who the shooter was, but no one would come forward to identify him. The boy's mother even acknowledged that she drove by the shooter's house every day on her way to work. An educator from Chicago who was interviewed by this same reporter said that what happens when people lose hope? You don't think things will get better, and so you just give up. We know nothing about this man with the evil spirit from our reading today. We don't know his background. We don't know how long he had been suffering. What we do know is that Jesus commands the demon to leave the man. And as it came out of him, the man convulsed, and the onlooker stood in amazement. We never hear anything else about the, that man. And because of this, we're so kinda, we can surmise that the story is more about Jesus' authority over unclean spirits than it is about a specific person. The demon doesn't even seem to appear to be too concerned about anything other than Jesus once Jesus appears on the scene. The Spirit says, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, he declares. You are the Holy One of God. This gives us some mighty important and life-saving insight into how we are to deal with unclean spirits and difficulties in our lives. As we acknowledge and recognize and live with the horrible perils of life, our ultimate focus is to be on Jesus. For Jesus alone is the only one who can overcome any or all of our difficulties. We need to shift 
the focus of our attention from our problems to that of Jesus, the Messiah. There is no other way. Jesus is the one who has the authority to free us and bring us into a relationship with God. To persons whose lives are like a horror movie, cluttered by tragedy and everyday cares, Jesus proclaims that we are all fashioned in God's image. We are all the jewel of God's creation. To those struggling with the trials of life, Jesus proclaims that God's love is an anchor that can allow us to stand against the dangers that come at us both from within and from without. You see, Jesus provides a relationship with God that pushes back our darkness, that pushes back our secret fears, and that frees us to walk boldly, knowing that every single day of our life is more than, than the worth than we had ever thought of despite the dangers that we face. <laughs> and I guess that's kind of good news, isn't it? In fact, it's really, really good news. Because of Jesus, we can trust God's love for us so great that life's demons and dangers never have the last word in our lives. And that's good news. I read this morning about medical, uh, medical researchers at John Hopkins University who have a, now identified a medical condition caused by stressed cardio, called cardiomyopathy. Now this new research shows that tragic or shocking life events, including the loss of a loved one, a car accident, an armed robbery, a, a fierce argument, can cause a sudden surge in adrenaline that actually weakens the heart muscles. It is that tightness that sometimes you might experience in your chest that comes when a sense of doom or hopelessness is entered into your life. According to the lead author of the study, he says, it looks like and acts like a heart attack. But when you go to the lab, the arteries have no blockages. The patients had very few or none of the typical risk factors for heart disease. It was their emotional pain which stunned their hearts and caused the chest pain the fluid in the lungs, the shortness of breath, as much as danger as any ordinary heart attack. Again, we cannot get through this life unless our ultimate focus is on Jesus. And it is only through a relationship with Christ that we can shift our focus from our problems to our Savior. Do we feel that we can trust God that much? Are we willing to focus on Christ rather than on our problems? Do we want to live, really, really live? Or are we more comfortable covering and cowering in a corner, allowing the invading outside forces to control us and, and to destroy us. I can tell you that Jesus wants a, what he wants from us. Jesus wants a relationship with him which is based on trust. Jesus wants us to be free from the bondage and slavery to the things that we, which seek to undo us. Jesus wants our lives to be productive and, and useful. Jesus wants us to stop focusing so much on self and focus on God and God's love. 
and thus on our neighbors as well. To put it simply, Jesus wants us to let go and let God. Jesus has come to this earth in the form of a human being. He has joined in the struggle against the forces of evil and destruction. And for those whose lives have become a total nightmare, Jesus has come to be the human bridge across which people can climb to safety. And in the process, Jesus himself paid with his own life the price for this saving authority. Now the demons had their final shriek at Jesus as he hung on the cross, challenging and mocking the validity of his authority for the last time. On the cross, he completed the healing work that he started in Mark chapter 1 in that synagogue in that little town called Capernaum. And through faith in Christ, and only through faith in Christ, are we provided with the Holy Spirit who gives us the power to, to overcome the unclean spirits which seek to haunt and destroy us. There's a story about a conversion between an Afri African convert to Christianity and a missionary visiting his village. One day these two men went walking through the jungles outside of the village and, and the man from Africa was reflecting on the, the radical change in his life since he had learned to trust in Jesus. These jungles, he said, are very dark. Most of my life I walked through them in, in fear of the demons I was taught that lived there. I no longer walk in fear on these paths. There may be demons, or, or there may not be demons, but I am Christ's, and that is enough. We all need to have that kind of trust. You may have problems in your life. Things may not be going the way that you think they should go. But you have Christ. And that is enough. Because the reality is, we all are jungles in life to walk through, don't we? We all have them whether they are covered with vines or are paved in concrete. And there may or may not be demons on those paths, but we are Christ, and that is enough. To believe this is the key to salvation, the key to Christianity in the world that despite its panic and its despair has already been claimed by the loving authority of God in Christ Jesus. Do you believe this? Amen.
Amen. This morning, I'd like to share with you all the prayer concerns and our prayer requests from our community of faith. First, I'd like to begin with our joys with all the prayers that we've had answered in our community. Among them includes uh, George and Barbara Kirkhoff, B.J. Jenkins, Betty Newman, Bonnie Snook, Phyllis Hogart, uh, Lauren Toybert, um, Shelby, Chad, Caitlin, and Colton Click, and Ray Wiseman. We also pray for, uh, or give thanks for, to uh, the recovery of Tom Snook, Laura Powell, Jenny Click, and Dave Click. We also are joyful for the recoveries of Rodney Hildebrand, Jim Long, Sue Rexroad, Roger Drelliman, Scott Kirkhoff, and Garnett Souter. We also lift up prayers of sympathy for all the families of the following. For Reverend James Lamb, Larry Hogarth, uh, Judy Moody, Donald Davis, Walt Gordon, Jeff Vaughn, and Martha Stoops, and for all who have died from COVID-19. Our ongoing prayer concerns include the following. Brandon Bowser Sox, Jenny and Dave Click, Greg Early, Laura Ipok Powell, Julie Prentice, Audley Rotun, and Tom Snook. We continue to pray for all nursing homes and prisons with COVID. We also continue to pray for Jim Barnes, Mike Bennett, Nancy Bryant, Harold Burkholder, Crystal Curry, Glenna Deaton, Grace Fishback, Betty Foley, Forrest Frazier, Vicki Gibson, Bob Holden, Anthony Drelliman, Roger Drelliman, Anna Keller, Dr. Bob McDonald, um, Becky Miller, Glenn Thomas, Nancy Thomas, and Donald Usery. Now let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for freeing us from the bondage of sin and darkness, mm -hmm. granting us liberty to live out life abundantly in you. We, as Bridgewater United Methodist Church, join together in lifting up all of our church family we pray for all who grieve, all who are sick, all who are injured, all who are lonely, and all who face all sorts of trials and hardships. We pray for our community, the town of Bridgewater, for all of our leaders, and for all who work and go to school, and for all who are in need. We pray for Virginia for our governor and all of our state leaders as they continue to provide uh, for us in caring to end the pandemic. We pray for our country, the United States, for our president, congressional leaders, and judges. We pray for the distribution process of vaccines across our country. We pray for all the governments and leaders of the world nations. We pray that you would help them in the midst of the struggles that they face in coordinating their vaccine supplies throughout Europe and throughout nations across this world. We pray also for those nations that struggle to have the financial means and access to vaccines at the moment. We pray that you would open avenues for them 
to care for their people. We pray for the United Methodist Church, for all of our leaders, and for all of our church family. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are part of the Universal Church around the world. Help us all to seek out living and the abundant life you've given us, recognizing the power that we have in you to be free from sin. Thank you, Lord. And we lift up all the prayer concerns that are in our hearts and minds in silence at this time. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers, and we praise your holy name, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all for your faithful offerings, gifts, and tithes. Your work in furthering the mission here in Bridgewater and the world beyond is truly appreciated and is changing the world. We have several ways you can give. First, you can go onto our website and you'll find a link that will lead you to our Faith Life app where you'll be able to sign or provide an offering online. Another way you'll be able to give is by uh, writing your check and placing it in the mail to our church office or coming by to the church office during our regular week hours, which is Monday through Fridays, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Well, let's give thanks to God for all of the gifts and offerings and tithes we're going to be presenting to the Lord this week. Let us pray. God of power and wisdom, we give you our eternal thanks for the gift of your Son, who came not only to save, but to teach us about your wisdom and how we might live, readying ourselves for that kingdom. He taught with authority, and if we listen, we will live a life of generosity, mercy, and compassion. Bless what we give this day and help us to be faithful in using all of our resources. We might live like those anticipating your kingdom. In Christ we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our closing hymn today is To Know You More.
It is time for us to come to the end of our worship service once again. We've gathered here to be in presence with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And from wherever you are, whether in your homes or at work or here at the church, we know that Jesus Christ walks with us. Even in the midst of our struggles and in the midst of our trials, we're not alone. We go with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.